Welcome to a video and demonstration of the topic of cognates of linkages. I'm Professor Norton from WPI, and we'll give you a little um, background on the subject, and then I'm going to show you a model that I think will cement the idea as to how these cognates work. I'm going to start with a review of coupler curves. If you've seen my other video on coupler curves, then you already know all that stuff, but I think we need to start with a brief review of that. Then we'll introduce the topic of cognates, so-called. We'll go to the Roberts and Cayley diagrams. I have a model of those which we'll show you, and then we'll talk briefly about geared five-bar cognates of four-bar linkages and sum it up. So here is a four-bar linkage drawn with a very large coupler, extended so that I can pepper it full of holes to generate coupler curves. So here is our link 2, which would be the crank. This is a Grashoff linkage, so that can go in a full circle. Here's our link 4, which is a rocker. It's a Grashoff crank rocker. And both of those links are pivoted to these points on the coupler, which, as I said, has all these other holes. And in that other coupler curve tape that I mentioned, I showed you how if you stick a pen through one of those holes with a model of this linkage, it will draw a curve of some sort. And these curves tend to have a variety of shapes. They're very complex curves. They're of sixth degree. And they can have such things as cusps and crew nodes, so-called, which are crossovers. The crew node is a crossover on the curve. The cusp is a sharp point, point of instantaneous zero velocity. They can have approximately straight segments. You can't get a perfect straight line with a four-bar linkage, but you can come pretty close. Sometimes you can get two approximate straight lines, and so forth. So that's what we're talking about, Cu uh, linkages that generate interesting coupler curves. And there's an infinity of those, of course. Now, way back in the 19th century, uh, late 1800s, two men independently discovered this uh, theorem, which is now given their joint names, Samuel Roberts in England and Chebyshev in Russia, independently discovered that there are three different planar pin-jointed four-bar linkages that will trace the identical coupler curve. Later on, uh, Hartenberg and Denovit gave these the name cognates. So we're talking, when we use that term, about the triplet of four-bar linkages which give the same coupler curve. So the exercise here today is to find those other two members of the set of three given the first one. So here is a four-bar linkage. This happens to be non-Grashoff, but you know from uh, your readings or looking at the other tape that non-Grashoff linkages also give fully closed coupler curves. And you'll see this coupler curve in a bit. I didn't draw it on here, but it has some shape, something like that. And I need to move these links around, obviously, to get that. And we can't do that on paper, but we'll do it in the model very shortly. But first, I want to show you how I will find the other two members of the set. Here's the trick. The first thing we do is effectively pin down link 3, the coupler, at least in your imagination, and decouple links 4 and 2 from their physical pivots on the ground plane, which I call link 1, and rotate those two links, 2 and 4, until they're collinear with the uh, edge of link 3. And having done that, I now have it in what we were, we're going to call the Cayley configuration, or the Cayley diagram. And by straightening those links out temporarily, I can now do this very simple construction. If I draw lines parallel to each side of the coupler, that's one side of the coupler, that's a line parallel to it. There's the other side of the coupler, there's a line parallel to it. Where they intersect will be a pivot of the other pair of cognates. I've labeled that OC to go along with the OA and the OB down here. This line is parallel to this edge of the coupler. And note that if I extend the edges of the coupler, like so and like so, in combination with this line parallel to my straightened out links down here, I find these other intersections and in fact, these triangles are geometrically similar to the original coupler. 
and these constitute the couplers of the other two cognates. So now I have all three of my cognates staring at me. I've numbered them. Uh, the original one was two, three, and four, one being the ground plane. So here we have five, six, and seven, and eight, nine, and ten. So we have ten links total, which might make you wonder, since we have three four-bar linkages, why don't we have twelve links? Well, all three of them share one link in common, which is the ground plane, i.e. the paper. And so that knocks you back to ten. So there are my ten links, but they aren't yet in the proper configuration because I changed this original one around by straightening the links out. So we've got to fix that problem. So here's the diagram that I just drew, so-called Cayley diagram. Its value is that it finds the link lengths for me and the shapes of the couplers very easily and very quickly. Now what I have to do is put it back into the original configuration. Recall that I decoupled this OA and OB, as I label them, from the ground plane and moved them up to, into this collinear mode with link 3. We've got to put them back where they belong. So if I grab those links, 2 and 4, still with link 3 pinned to the paper, and I put them back where they belong, without disconnecting any of this stuff, the others will follow along quite dutifully, and it will pull OC down to the proper position where it belongs to give me the geometry of the finished three cognates. So now, this is referred to as the Roberts diagram, and we're now looking at the three cognates together in their proper orientations with the pivots in the right place. Notice also that once you figure out what's going on here, you actually don't need to go through this Cayley diagram business to find these cognates. If I just started with this original linkage in gray, and I recognize that each of these loops here is a parallelogram, as you can see over on the Cayley diagram. So are they parallelograms here? They have to be. Once you make a parallelogram, it stays a parallelogram when you rotate it. So I could draw a line parallel to this edge of link 3, and I could draw another line parallel to link 2 through the point P, and that would give me that parallelogram. I could do the same over here. And then link 9 and link 6 are simply uh, similar triangles to the original link 3, so I can construct similar triangles. I know how to do that. The only remaining mystery is where is OC? You notice the dotted lines here. That triangle shown dotted is also similar to link 3, and if I place its base across the fixed pivots, it will tell me where OC is. So I don't really need the Cayley to get the Roberts, but it does make things simpler. Uh, and I will show you that in a second on the model. Now once I have found this Roberts configuration by whatever means, the only step left is to separate them. So now I take them apart, but I have to maintain the geometry of the new uh, link ones, if you want to think of them that way. So cognate two, as I've labeled this, has a ground link now from here to there and cognate 3 has a ground link from there to there. I, I've just pulled those apart sideways and separated them out. So I now have my three four-bar linkages that generate the same curve, and they are obviously different. In some respects, they're the same. For example, if I started with a non grashoff triple rocker here, as I did in this case, I'm going to get only triple rockers, non grashoff linkages in the other two cognates. I'm not going to change that condition. If I started off with a grashoff linkage, say a crank rocker, its two cognates will also be Grashoff, but one will be a crank rocker and the other will be a double crank, which might be of less use because I can't drive the rockers in full circles to get the whole curve. But be that as it may, one thing that I have changed is the locations of at least one of the fixed pivots. So if it turned out that the coupler curve generated by the original linkage here was uh, very much to your liking, but the locations of the fixed pivots were not because they were interfering with something uh, that you didn't have a place to put the pin, then perhaps finding the cognates will get you out of the pickle because you can then use pivots in different locations and get the same curve. The geometry of the curve, the shape of the curve will be identical. However, if I drive a different link, and uh, obviously in a different cognate will be a different link, so if I drive a link in another cognate, with a, a particular velocity pattern, 
the velocities and accelerations along the coupler curve will be different for each of the cognates. That's the major difference. Okay, let's go to the model now, and I will show you how this works, and then it will, I hope, make a lot more sense. This is the cognate model I said I would show you, and I'm being assisted by Apu Thomas, my able teaching assistant, and he's going to help me put the links together. Uh, first, I want to show you that this does, in fact, move through the coupler curve that you saw in the diagrams earlier in the static pictures. So this is a non grashoff linkage, so I'm driving it from the coupler. Now, what I want to do is create the Cayley diagram. So to do that, the first step, as you saw in the diagrams before, is to straighten this linkage out so that link 2 is in line with link 3 and link 4. If you could just support that for a second after, I'll get the second linkage. Now, as I showed you on the diagrams, we drew some lines parallel to the sides of the triangle. Why don't you grab, I got that, why don't you grab the top. Okay, I've got the bottom. And we're going to put on this red linkage, which represents the first cognate. Get that pin in place. You okay up there? Now, you can see that this line right here, represented by those three links, is parallel to this edge of the coupler. This edge of the of the new coupler is parallel to this line down here. And if I draw each edge of the coupler and extend it, well, at least this one intersects at this point. We'll see the other one when we get the third linkage on, which Apu is going to bring over right now. So we have the third cognate, and we'll place that on the pins, if we can. There we go. All right. So that completes our Cayley diagram. So now you see we have a line over here in the form of these three links. Um, I'm not sure what the numbers were in the diagrams now, but uh, this line is parallel to this edge and also this edge. These three triangles are similar, and that creates our Cayley diagram and finds for us the appropriate location of this pivot that I called OC up here. Now, here's the, the tricky part. We have to get this back from the Roberts to the, I'm um, sorry, from the Cayley to the Roberts. So Apu is going to man the top pin, and we're going to pull those out. It's a little tough to get out. And we move the link down here. You can see this pivot is going back to where it originally started. And I now have the Roberts configuration. Is that in up there? OK. So now I'm back to the proper geometry for the original green linkage. And I now want to show you that all three of these, while connected together, can actually go through the entire coupler curve, provided that I pull on the right link here. And all three of those linkages generate the identical coupler curve, which is what makes them cognates. I'll put it back in the original configuration. That, in that position, should look something like the picture in your book of the Roberts diagram, because this, in fact, is the same linkage that we have in the book. The next step, which I'm not going to do here uh, on the model, would be, of course, to pull these apart, maintaining the appropriate center distances. So the red one with this center distance would be one of my cognates. The blue one with this center distance is a second of my cognates. And this is my original for the three cognates that generate the same linkage. So that should give you a better idea as to how these things relate better than what you can see on the static piece of paper. So. To recap what we just did, we took the original linkage, straightened it out, drew some lines parallel to this and that, similar triangles to determine our link lengths. And then I showed you how with that all together as physical links, I could pick this pin up over here and bring it back to where it belongs to create the proper link one. And this pin will come back to where it belongs to OC and when I move that whole assembly, I get the same coupler curve that I started with. That's the story of cognates right there. Now, as an epilogue, I want to point out to you that in addition to the three four-bar linkages that give the same coupler curve, I can also get the same coupler curve from at least one geared five-bar linkage. And I do that by constructing this diagram. So here's the same four-bar linkage, or at least one very similar to it, uh, that we were just looking at. And I construct parallelograms now, in, shown in red, uh, for each of the sides of the 
coupler and one of the pivoted links, other side of coupler, other pivoted link. And these two red um, sets or dyads give me a five bar linkage, one being the original ground link. This would be, if I renumbered them, two, three, four, five, I've got them five, six, seven, eight right here. Now, to drive that and make it one degree of freedom, I have to add a gear train. And in fact, it has to be a positive one gear ratio for this to work. So I need an idler in between the two gears that are on the two pivots, OA and OB. And link five is physically attached to this gear, and link eight is physically attached to this gear. And if I rotate either link five or link eight in this case, point P will generate exactly the same coupler curve as it did with the four bar linkage. Now, this is, in fact, a, a non grashoff four-bar linkage as I've drawn it. And it may turn out that when you create this geared five-bar equivalent, or cognate, so-called, that you may, in fact, have a grashoff configuration. And you may be able to rotate this in a complete circle, which will make it bit easier to get through the whole curve, unlike the struggle I had with the diagram a moment ago. There also are some uh, six-bar linkages that will give you the same coupler curve. And this is explained in more detail in your textbook. I think it's in Chapter 3. No, I'm sorry. It's in Chapter 6. OK. Let's sum up what we've done. We found the same four where our coupler curve can be generated by three four-bar linkages, which we call cognates, three gear five-bar linkages with plus one gear ratio, at least one six-bar linkage, as I mentioned in passing. So we can get at least seven linkages to generate the same curve. These Cayley and Roberts diagrams help us find the two four-bar cognates of any particular four-bar linkage. All the four-bar cognates in the triplet will share the same Grashoff condition and the same minimum transmission angle. So we don't actually get any advantage in terms of different transmission angles from our, or better transmission angles at least in terms of their minimum values, from the cognates. And the geared 5-bar cognate of a non-Grashoff 4-bar may be Grashoff. No guarantee, but it can be. OK, that should give you a little better idea as to what cognates are, what they do, and how you can use them. So why don't you try it out with one of your assignments. See you next time.